Hello there. Responding to the work of other scholars and then introducing original, well-informed ideas is essentially what academic writing is all about. And more than that, readers will only take your contribution seriously if you back up what you say with evidence from reliable sources. This means you have to integrate the work of those other scholars into your writing. But how do we do that exactly? In this video, we're going to look at how to present sources in writing so that it's clear which ideas are yours and which come from other scholars. As part of this, we're also going to deal with plagiarism. We'll talk about what plagiarism is, why you shouldn't do it, and how to make sure you avoid it. Let's get started. When we integrate sources into our writing, we want to keep two clear aims in mind. Transparency. It needs to be clear to the reader which ideas are yours and which are someone else's. Traceability. You need to give the reader the information they need to be able to check your sources. If they can do that, they can evaluate and build on your work. So how do we make sure that we use sources in a way that is transparent and traceable? We do this by citing our sources whenever we use them in our text. When we cite, we tell our readers that we got the idea from someone else, we make it transparent, and where to find the original source, we make it traceable. Making it traceable means your reader needs enough information to be able to find the source for themselves. So, for every source that we cite, we give at least these four basic pieces of information. Who wrote the source? The title of the source? The date when the source was published? And who published it? Together, these basic pieces of information are like an address for the source. With these, the reader can track down the source for themselves, for example, in a library catalog. This address is called a citation. You need to provide a citation every time you refer to a source in your writing. So, if you're quoting your source, you need to provide a citation. Notice here that we use quotation marks to show that these are the exact words of the author we are referring to. But sometimes you don't use the exact words of the author. You might paraphrase or summarize the source. Although you now don't need the quotation marks, you still need to provide a citation. Sometimes you might collect a few different sources together to support your point. Again, a citation is needed here. How you actually present or format these citations and sources depends on what citation style or manual of style you're using. That will be explained in a separate video. Now, what happens if we don't show in a transparent, traceable way where our information comes from? Well, it might look like we made everything up and didn't use any sources. But it can also look like we're stealing other people's work. This is known as plagiarism. Plagiarism means presenting someone else's work as if it's your own. In the academic world, this is seen as a very serious offence. Academic debate relies on students and researchers being able to share their ideas freely, without worrying about them being misused by others. You would also feel cheated if someone else used your ideas without giving you the deserved credit. Because plagiarism threatens that open and fair academic debate, you need to make sure you avoid doing it, even by accident. You might think, of course, I would never steal someone else's work. But even then, it can happen. Sometimes it happens when you get into difficulties with your work. For example, if you're writing your paper at the last minute, it can be very tempting to just copy something you found online and hope that no one will notice. But tutors are very good at spotting plagiarism. What's more, they have the help of automatic plagiarism detection software, which all universities use. Plagiarism will get caught, so don't take the risk. Very often, plagiarism happens by accident. For example, maybe you copied something from a published article and then forgot and just pasted it into your paper. Even though you didn't mean to do it, it's still plagiarism, and it can still have serious consequences. Remember that leaving work to the last minute also makes accidents like this more likely to happen. For example, when you're under stress, it's easy to get confused with your sources and run out of time to properly integrate them. 
Here are some practical tips to help you steer clear of plagiarism. Plan your time and make sure you don't end up doing your work in a last-minute rush. Keep an organized record of your sources with all the information you need for citation. Avoid copy-pasting other people's writing into your work, even sources that you plan to include in your writing. Lastly, an important part of avoiding plagiarism is understanding when you need to cite. If you're in any doubt, about whether you need a citation, seek guidance and talk to your tutor. So, in this video we've seen that citing is the way we let our readers know which ideas we got from other sources and where to find those sources. Whenever we use a source, we want it to be transparent and traceable. If it isn't, it means we're not participating fairly in the academic debate, our reader is not fully informed and we run the risk of committing plagiarism. If you plagiarize, the consequences can be very serious, even if you do it by accident. You should check the plagiarism guidelines of your program for more details on this. So, keep your sources organized and avoid copy-pasting. If you do get into a difficult situation with your work, you're not alone. Go and talk to someone who can help you and clarify what needs to be done. That's all for this video. See you next time.